This video is brought to you by Skillshare. Hey yo, I've always said dark users gotta be some of the coldest characters in all of fiction, bro. Like even as a kid, I always said my top two favorite elements for superpowers were dark powers and ice powers. Like to be honest, those gotta be top two most underrated elements, bro. Like bro, I've been ride or die with the darkness gang since day one, all right? My favorite two Pokemon used to be Mischievous and Gengar, bro. Like I was so hyped when they finally dropped the dark type gym leader a couple years ago. Even though I'm not gonna lie, I was sick as when I finally saw his character design, bro. Cause bro looks like he stole his drip from Monster High. Like it's honestly gross, bro. They need to drop me is the next dark type gym leader let me go crazy on your heads you feel me like i swear i'm about to have the most annoying puzzle in my gym before you can even shoot the fade bro it's gonna be great uh hey editing teddy here so it's come to my attention after further research that both gengar and mischievous are ghost type pokemon not dark types um my fault yo but honestly my point still stands bro like both of them are aesthetically dark adjacent pokemon all right <laughs> enjoy the rest of the vid though anyway like yeah i've always had an affinity for dark users right so when i first started black clover like i don't know geez it's gotta be like four years ago at this point damn but when i first saw yami i was like oh, all right we got a dark user all right bet let's see what's up with them like i was praying for him bro i was really praying for the continued success and prosperity of another dark user i'm always praying for dark users in any way shape or form like if you're a dark user you're always gonna have me in your corner bro like i'm not gonna lie I hope Blackbeard finds the One Piece. Okay, that's a little out of pocket, I'm not gonna lie. Anyway, back to Yami. So I'm here today to prove to y'all that Yami Tsukihiro of Black Clover is a stamp certifiable GOAT, bro. Like, he's one of the greatest to ever do it, and there's simply no denying it. And honestly, I don't see enough people giving my man's his flowers, bro. Like, he's deadass underrated in every sense of the word. So yeah, with that said, I would like to formally invite y'all. That's right. You out there watching this right now in goddamn Ohio or something have been formally invited to the first ever Goaty Awards. Yeah, is this thing on? Alright, bet. First, let me just get this out of the way, because I already know what y'all are about to say. Trust me, trust me, trust me, okay? It's not rigged. This isn't the Grammys, okay? Everyone on the committee is a certifiable, non-biased genius, okay, bro? Just... We, we got y'all. So with all that said, go ahead and put on your nicest dress or your cleanest tux or whatever you want to pop out in, bro. But make sure you dress in dark colors because today we're here to celebrate the captain of the Black Bulls, the darkness legend himself. Y'all, give it up for the GOAT, Yami Tsukihiro. Alright, off the rip. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Alright, alright. Slow your roll, slow your roll talking about off the rip. We gotta talk about today's sponsor first. Today's episode of The Goaties is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of unique classes you could take that teach you skills ranging anywhere from video editing to illustration to I don't know, music production. They have a premium membership that gives you access to all of their classes entirely ad-free. It's a great place to explore new skills or even level up skills you already have. So me, for example, uh, you seen that intro I had at the beginning of the video? Yeah, that joint was looking clean, wasn't it? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That intro was actually made possible by a couple of Skillshare classes. So I took this class called Kinetic Typography that was taught by Clarence Maluda. And basically using that class and a couple other classes the guy offered on his Skillshare, I was able to put together this pretty nice, pretty professional, pretty clean looking intro. I mean, come on, bro, that joint was clean. Like, it's legit. But you know what? You don't gotta take my word for it. You can try it for yourself because the first 1,000 people to either use the link in the description or use my code at checkout will get one month of Skillshare entirely free of charge. So go ahead, cop your free membership, learn something new, expand your horizons. It helps out the channel. It helps out you. It's a win-win situation, bro. Come on. Like, well, think about it. But no, uh, thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. And... Back to the goaties, whatever I was so hyped to talk about. Uh, off the rip. All right, off the rip. Before we even get into this man's acts of goadedness, we gotta peep out the drip, bro, because Yami has what I like to call sleeper drip, okay? The reason it's sleeper drip is because on its own, 
it's not even that tough, I'm not gonna lie to you. Like, on its own, Yami kinda got bum dripping for being entirely truthful and honest. Like, bro, I know this man, Yami, isn't out here wearing leather pants tucked into his galoshes, bro. Like, that is insanity, bro. Look at his belt, bro. Long ass belt. Ain't no way he had to wrap that joint around his thighs three times to get it to fit, bro. Like, don't even get me started with this man's black bulls cloak, bro. Like, bro, please, please, for the love of God, please just cop a new one. That one is hanging on by a single thread. So, yeah. Yami, he, he kind of got L drip, I'm not gonna lie to you. But, in the context of this verse, Yami's drip goes crazy, bro. Like, you gotta think about it like this. This man, Yami, lives in a world filled with these, like, hoity-toity ass freaking Harry Potter wizards, right? Like, they be in Black Clover rocking these, like, puffy ass cloaks, and I don't know, these, like, weird ass braids going down the middle of their face, but, like, nah, seriously, like, what are we doing here? Because watching this show, this man's braid used to piss me off so much. Like, there's absolutely no practical reason for having a fat ass braid going down the center of your face like bro cut that week off please nah but <laughs> let me stop playing with the boy nozel before he pulls up and i don't know blows up my whole dorm building or something Hey, bro, you anyway, in this world of all these like posh 1400s looking ass wizards, you just got Yami, right? This swole diesel Japanese dude rocking a tank top, running around with the whole katana, just going sicko mode on a day to day basis. Like, bro, when you think about it, that's gotta be some of the hardest shit I've seen in my life, bro. Like, where did my mans even buy a tank top in the Black Cloververse, bro? Like, I swear he's the only one in the whole show dripped out like this. It's gotta be the same store that Asta bought that little goofy-ass, tight-ass spandex vest he started wearing post time skip, bro. Like, what is up with this vest, bro? Like, that joint don't even look like a article of clothing. It looks like a sticker. Like, Yami must be giving him fashion advice, bro, because <laughs> this vest is not it, bro. But you know what really pulls Yami's drip together? Even more than them musty-ass boots and that goofy belt, bro? Even more than the tank top and dare i say it even more than the katana bro i've never seen someone with so much drip all rolled into one cigarette now before we proceed all right let me just say real quick on my ad council public service announcement i beat don't don't smoke cigarettes okay like smoking tobacco has got to be top five nastiest things you can do to your body bro like i'm not gonna lie i know yami smells crazy bro because canonically he don't be doing anything in his free time besides smoking and taking boo-boos bro like <laughs> Sometimes at the same time too And he really be in there struggling bro Like I know he smells rancid I'm not gonna lie But all that aside Just think about the swag level You gotta have to pull up to a fight Just casually smoking a whole cigarette bro Just destroying your lungs mid fight And not even caring Cause you automatically know You can beat like 98% of the verse With low tier difficulty Like bro I'm pretty sure Half the time he be keeping the cigarette In his mouth like mid scrap Like if he doesn't take you seriously As an enemy He will pound your dumb ass While balancing a whole lit cigarette In between his lips bro like, that's gotta be an immense level of disrespect previously undiscovered by mankind. Like, bro, if I'm ever in Black Clover and I'm getting packed up by Yami while he's smoking the pack of his previous ops in my face, bro, I swear, up and down, that'll be the day I quit wizardry, bro. You will never hear me utter a single spell again in my life, bro. That'll be the day I take my grimoire and put that joint back on the shelf, bro, because clearly I just wasn't cut out for the wizardry life at that point. I don't know, bro. Depending on how disrespectful he gets, things might have to get drastic, bro. Like, I might have to really, I don't know, cop a devil contract and get more OP just so I can spin the block on, bro. Like, get the drop on him while he's taking one of his dumps or something. I don't know. So, yeah, Yami's drip is sleeper drip. But it's goaded, bro. Like, regardless of everything else, I feel like you gotta give that to him, bro. Like, it's only fair and it's only honest. Okay, so now that we got his drip certified, it's time to examine some of his best moments throughout the show. Because even though his drip is clean, his demeanor and the way he carries himself both on and off the battlefield is the real reason why we gather here today to give him this award. Alright, so to start off, we gotta go to the bottom of the sea, bro. Even deeper than Bikini Bottom, even deeper than Finding Nemo, bro. Way at the bottom of the sea, there's this place called the Underwater Temple, right? So basically, the Black Bulls, which is the name of Yami's wizard team, by the way, they were assigned to go on a mission where they gotta go to this temple and, like, find this magic stone, right? Alright, so boom, they pull up at this temple, right? They pull up, like, eight deep, like, the whole squad came out. And inside this temple, there's this old-ass man who's, like, the head priest of the whole Underwater Kingdom. And when I tell you this priest was on doofus mode for no reason whatsoever, Whatsoever. Like the black bulls really came here just to get the magic stone and dip, right? But here comes this priest just doing the absolute most for no reason at all, talking about, oh, if you want to get this magic stone, you're gonna have to play a game with me. Like, bro, really? This this what we're doing here? We're playing games now. So Yami's like, alright, bro, it's whatever. Like, what are you what are you trying to play? And the priest looks him dead in the eye and is like, oh yeah, run that Fortnite. Stop the cow. <laughs> 
It's like, nah, obviously the priest doesn't like actually like say they're about to run for it, okay? I'm pretty sure Black Clover ain't ready for that vicious copyright strike from Epic Games. I mean, their animation already looking a little whack. They, they don't need any blows to their budget. But for the sake of this video, we're just gonna act like he said Fortnite, all right? Because I've been playing a lot of Fortnite lately ever since they added that no build mode, all right? Half the reason this video took so long to make in the first place is because I was in my Fortnite bag for like the past two weeks. So yeah, like I know I just got a Fortnite pop up on my screen as I'm writing this script, bro. Like you see how the devil tries to distract you, bro? Crazy to me. Hopefully by the time you're watching this, I uninstalled the game so I can focus more on videos. So Yami's like, oh, you want to run the fort? Like, let's do it, bro. What's up? You know what I mean? Because Yami already knows that it's going to be an easy W for him. But the priest is like, oh, nah, uh, you can't play, my boy. I already know you're a sweat. You're a tryhard. You're going to you're gonna solo my whole squad. So you, you got to sit this one out. So Yami's like, dang, for real? Whatever. And he's basically chilling in, like, spectator mode with the priest in this little, like, separate room while the rest of the Black Bulls are fighting against the priest squad. So everything's going on fine and dandy, bro. Right? Like, the Black Bulls are really putting up some goaded numbers. I'm not going to lie to you. Like, it was really starting to look like they were about to take the victory royale back home but y'all already know what has to happen every time you putting up some good numbers in fortnite bro here come some haters trying to third party your 1v1s and unfortunately that is exactly what happened to the black bulls but bro their luck must have been insanely bad for real because it wasn't just any old random joe schmo that pulled up on them trying to run the fade bro it was this man veto and for those of you who might not have seen the show all you got to know is that the boy veto was probably like top five strongest in the show at this point in the series like he was really one of the right hand men of this dude named leech who was like the main villain in the show at this point we're gonna talk about Leech again in a bit, bro, but just for, like, context about how cold this dude Veto was, before he came barging into the underwater temple, he was literally on the seashore, smoking, like, 50 wizards, bro, and I don't even think he was, like, using magic, bro, I think he was just giving them straight paws. So, yeah, Veto comes down to this temple, and he just starts running solo squads on everyone, bro, just indiscriminately going beast mode on anyone who crosses his path. And I mean that literally, by the way, like, his magic is literally beast magic. So, Yami's like, all right, I'm not playing these games anymore. Let me go down there and handle this man real quick, and the priest is like... See, the thing is, bro, I would, but, like, we're kind of stuck in here. Because, long story short, basically, the priest had used this magic to, like, lock them in this room so they couldn't interfere with the game or whatever. So, they're basically stuck in the lobby, if you want to think about it like that. So, Yami's like, alright, you know what? I I'm done playing with you, bro. It's big Yami out here. And he pulls out his katana and just slices through the room like it's made out of straight butter, bro. Like, it was honestly insane. Now, I'm sitting here watching this, right? And I'm like, oh, yeah, Yami's about to pop off. You know, I'm getting hype. I'm ready to see the Yami versus Veto scrap. But, of course, they don't ever want to see a goat winning bro because while they were trapped in the room the boy veto basically got his mans to trap them inside this like pocket dimension so even though yami escaped the room he couldn't shoot the fade with veto because he was in a whole new dimension bro like it was really a big brain play if you really think about it so yami's trapped inside that dimension for like i don't know like the next five episodes bro like they were really dragging it out with this arc i'm not gonna lie but like to be honest the only reason veto didn't wipe the black bulls off the map in like 20 minutes is because of asta's plot armor magic bro like all things considered veto really should have got the boy asta up out of there in like two seconds flat but you know such is the way of the battle shonen i suppose instead of just you know wiping his ops off the map with maximum efficiency he had to just you know be a typical shonen villain and try to make them quote unquote despair and whatnot i don't even know bro so yeah for like the next five episodes asta and some of his teammates are just going 3v1 with veto just slowly trying to chip away at his health and eventually through the power of i don't know plot progression and teamwork they actually managed to take out this man veto for like five seconds bro because once he's down he starts doing something you never want to see from a villain bro he starts having tragic childhood flashbacks now y'all already know what time it is once a villain starts having flashbacks bro <laughs> they're coming back to the scrap with maximum felony intent and a vicious power up to top it off unless they're dr doofenshmirtz i guess because <laughs> That man clean has a flashback every episode just to get dropped off by an endangered species. So basically, through the power of childhood trauma, this man Veto respawns himself, right? And he's such a sore loser that he decides he's just gonna pull a whole cell form 2 and just blow up the whole temple, bruh. Basically by suicide bombing with his mana. And you gotta realize, at this point, all hope is kinda lost, bro, because everyone in this whole temple was basically either already beaten to a pulp by Veto or like all out of energy from trying to fight Veto. So like everyone's down dirty at this point. They're kinda just sitting there like, damn, this man's really about to blow us up and there's nothing we could do about it that's crazy rest in peace to us i guess but then when all hope was lost guess who pulls up out the cut on his all might save the day type energy 
Come on, bro. You already know who it is, bro. That's Big Yami, bro. Stop playing. But hold on now. Wasn't this dude Yami just trapped in a whole pocket dimension? How did he get out of that? Bro, I don't know what Yami was doing off screen for those couple of episodes he was trapped in the pocket dimension. But I feel like he most definitely had to pay off the riders, bro. Because when this man finally pulled up again, he popped out with one of the coldest abilities I have ever seen in my life, bro. Basically, while he was stuck in that dimension, he just casually taught himself a whole new technique, bro. Dark Cloak Dimension Slash. And when I tell you this ability is so busted, basically this attack does exactly what the name suggests. Yami coats his sword blade in darkness and lets out a slash so strong that it can literally cut through a whole dimension, bro. It can literally cut through space-time itself, bro. Like, you gotta realize, bro, at this point in the series, people weren't really moving OP like that yet, bro. Like, there weren't any devil users yet. The power scaling was still, like, relatively tame, bro. Like, a dude could throw a decent, like, medium-sized fireball and still be considered a top-tier mage at this point in the show. But then, here comes this man, Big Yami the Goat, bro, with just a brazen disregard for the current power scaling, bro. Just casually pulling up with a dimension-level attack out of nowhere, bro, really shifting the whole power scale in one attack. So he pulls up on Vettel, right? Looking as cold as ever, bro. Looking as drippy as ever. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you, bro. What he did next was mad overkill. Like, he didn't need to do all this. I think he must have been trying to flex his new power or something, bro. Because for some reason, this man Yami came to the conclusion that it was okay to just casually hit this man Veto with a dark cloak dimension slash, bro. Like, I don't know. That's low key felony timing right there. Because you gotta think about it, bro. Veto is strong, right? Like, he took out 50 Magic Knights. Like, bro, bro, you're so cool. But at the end of the day, He's still just a swole ass furry, bro. Like, there was no reason Yami had to hit his chest meat with an attack designed to slash through literal space time. But regardless of the ethics, bro, we're here to give out the Goatee Award, not the freaking, I don't know, Nobel Peace Prize. Who am I to question the methods? If it's goaded, is goaded. And one shotting furries with dimension slashes is goaded, bro. I'm sorry, I don't make the rules, bro. Talk to the Goaties Council or something, alright, bro? Um. Okay, so as I'm writing this script, I'm coming to realize I kind of made an oopsie. Remember how I said it's been a cool like four years since I started Black Clover? Yeah, well, apparently over those four years, I somehow accidentally got the show's timeline mixed up, okay? I know, bruh, I know. First the Pokemon mistake and now this, like, bro, to be honest, at this point, just unsubscribe, bro. I deserve it, bro. Like, bro, tighten up, Theodore. But nah, for the next display of goatedness, we gonna have to go back in time, okay? We actually gonna have to time warp back like 40 episodes prior to the episodes I I was just talking about luckily we got a special guest today right we got a special guest that can help us with that okay everyone so give it up for the wizard king julius nova Chrono. all right clap it up right? he's gonna he's gonna use his time magic to help us go back in time for this next moment of goodness so yeah let's get it all right bet so off the rip for this next moment i'm gonna have to take y'all into a cave okay <laughs> They call the cops. But alright, trust me, trust me, just follow me, stay close. I don't need y'all running into any of the dark type Pokemon that are in this cave, alright? Anyway, all y'all need to know is that some of the coldest moments in Black Clover history went down in this cave, okay? And come on, bro, y'all already know who the MVP of this cave arc was, bro. Like, do I even need to say it anymore? Yeah, I didn't think so. But nah, in all seriousness, the boy Yami put up some historic Hall of Fame numbers in this cave, bro. Honestly, if I had more time, I could probably spend a whole 20 minutes talking about this cave arc, but this script already starting to look longer than Yami's belt, bro. Like, for the next few seconds, you just gonna be looking at a blank screen so that I can give Editing Teddy a quick break with the editing, because I know bro has to be struggling by now. Anywho... I'ma call this section of the video Yami's Goaded Gauntlet, okay? And I picked that name because the boy Yami was running the gauntlet with the show's most OP villains at the time, bro. Like, I'm trying to tell you, this man was a dog, bro. He was on a different degree of demonics out here, bro. Like, no one was really holding him, bro, if we're being real. But anyway, yeah. So to start off, I gotta fulfill my promise from earlier, okay? We gotta talk about the dude Leech, alright? Now look, I don't wanna go, like, I don't wanna spend too much time talking about the fight itself, right? And that's for two main reasons. For one, me talking about Yami's performance in this fight adds nothing to this video. Like, don't get me wrong, he popped out with the smoke, right? He always does, but we already certified that, so like, it's, there's no point in talking about it again. The second reason I'm not gonna talk about this fight is because, bro, in all truthfulness and honesty, Yami should've got fried in this fight. Like, he even said it himself, he was like, yep, we're about to die, but, you know, his boy came through and used this freaking, like, full counterattack. Basically, I don't want to talk about it because the fight itself was low-key a Mickey Mouse victory, alright, bro? I said it, I said it, I said it. But with all that said, the goaded moment that I want to talk about actually happened at the very beginning of this fight, like, when the fight first started picking up. And all I want to say is, bro, you're gonna want to sit back for this one, because I ain't ever seen a villain in my life get 
dog like this in the history of fictional villainy, bro. Like, this was insane for real. All right, so look, we got the dude leeched, right? And he, he's running a 1v1 with Yami. And you know, they're going through the, the common courtesies of an anime fight, if you will. Like, you know how it goes, bro. They're kind of just sizing each other up, you know, talking back and forth, you know, throwing a couple blows, not really going all out yet. Okay, so eventually the fight starts to pick up, right? And they're, they're getting ready to really start running the fade. And you know, naturally, as a super villain, Leech wants to share his backstory, right? Like, it's gonna get him hyped up. He's, go he's gonna get a childhood trauma buff or something. You know what I mean? Basically the same thing we were just talking about with Veto. So Leech goes into sharing his backstory. And you know, it's cool for real. I guess. And I'm not gonna lie. If you ask me to summarize his backstory, I couldn't. It didn't stick with me. And you know why his backstory didn't stick with me? Because this man, Yami, had the raw, bold-faced audacity to cut this man leeched oh, off right mid-backstory and... Oh my god. And then flip the script and start telling his backstory. Bro, I want you to really think about this. Like, I want you to really pause this video and just ponder, bro. Have you ever seen a hero give the villain a backstory lecture? Like, this has to be a Hall of Fame anime moment when you think about it. Because as a villain, if nothing else, your backstory gotta be on go. I know they be rehearsing them shits in villain school, bro. Because I have never once seen a villain stutter even once when giving a villain speech. Yet this man, Yami, with no remorse, no regards for the trope, no regards for the feelings of our villain really just got him up out of there and started dropping backstory bars on us like he really stole his thunder and you know bro tell me why yami's backstory went so much harder than leeches bro like he really blew this man out the water in every category bro like yami's backstory went so hard leech ain't even want to box with him anymore bro like he was really about to let yami go scot-free on like i have no quarrel with you type energy bro but you know of course yami had to stay and like protect asta and stuff like he wasn't just gonna ditch on his gang so like yeah that's part one of the goaded gauntlet and part two should honestly be pretty quick because it's not rocket science to understand how goaded this next moment was basically after yami catches that mickey mouse victory over leech that i was just talking about leech's boys and girl this time decide to pull up and like slide for leech or something so we got veto who we already talked about we got the girl fauna who has like this op salamander spirit that basically made her like one of the strongest fire users at the time and the dude riot who has this busted ass imitation magic bro long story short yami basically runs the 3v1 against all three of these busted ass villains at the same time like do i even have to explain why this is goaded he's already worn down from the leech fight yet he still holds his own against these absolute monsters monsters bro and keep in mind he's doing all this while using some of his magic to use like a force field to protect his squad nah but the craziest part is it really wouldn't be yami if he didn't do some doofus mood goof sh mid fight bro like tell me why when this man raya really started stealing yami's flow and like used his imitation magic to steal yami's dark magic yami really canonically threatened this man with the copyright strike like dead ass in the dialogue of the series he says he will sue this man for copyright infringement like bro is your name Yami? Or is it Toei? Cause you know, you know what? Nah, let me let me not get my channel clapped over a joke, bro. In fact, yeah, <laughs> it's time to wrap this up, bro. Let's go home. Let's go home. Look, personally, I don't see a better candidate for a Godi Award in the game right now. So the first ever Godi Award has to go to Yami Sukihiro, bro. Clap it up for me, bro. Clap it up. But look, if y'all got a character who you think is deserving of GOAT status, let me know in the comments, bro. And you know, depending on how this video does, hopefully we can make the Godies an ongoing series, but yeah until then i'll see y'all in the next vid bro love y'all stay blessed peace yeah